is it Wednesday? Wednesday. It is Wednesday. <laughs> Between youth fair last week and the weather this week, I don't know what day it is anymore. But it is the Brownwood Lions Coaches Show. We are back. I am Derek Stuckley, along with Brownwood Lions head football coach, athletic director Sammy Burnett. How you been, sir? We hadn't done this in a few days. Well, we hadn't. We weren't able to do it Monday because of the weather. But man, I enjoyed the time, you know, with my daughter and wife and, and at the house. But then. It gets, becomes a time where you've been inside all the time and you just want to go do something. But it was good. Uh, sat by a fire, watched some football, watched some dismal football, watched some decent football, and uh, made it through the little winter storm. But uh, it sure was cold. We're not used to that kind of cold, and I don't like that kind of cold. No, no. And because of the winter weather, we have basketball tonight. That's right. Here but, in a few minutes. Yeah, bars will tip off here pretty quick. JB and freshmen are already at it. But uh, we had uh, basketball with Steamville moved to tonight because of the weather conditions and, and what we're worried about in schools being closed. We also have soccer cancellations of games against Decatur that were set for third, uh, Tuesday were both canceled, uh, boys and girls. And then the, uh, Gerald has canceled the boys on Friday, so we won't have boys soccer this week. Uh, again, tonight, uh, our girls will tip off here just in a little bit. They're playing Steamville at Warren Gym, so get out there and, and support them. It'll be a packed house. Uh, really, games that we need to win. We went over to Graham on Friday. Uh, neither team was successful. The girls dropped their match 39 to 30. Uh, at one point, got within four. Uh, it's that typical uh, what we talk about with those girls. I mean, they're, when they're hot, they're as good as anybody, and they can play with anybody and beat anybody. But when they're not, uh, they struggle. Uh, staying in ball games but I think we, what we're talking about they were at the soccer game they had shot 17 percent uh, and made 10 of however many shots so it's hard to win when you're doing that I know they play great defense they play hard and they keep themselves in the game but uh, just more consistency with uh, with with uh, their percentages of, of makes uh, will help them uh, look forward to the game in just a little bit uh, Steamville beat Mineral Wells by two uh, we handled Mineral Wells pretty well but again, it's which team's going to show up. We've got to find consistency, uh, week in and week out, game in and game out, and uh, look up, and you'll have an opportunity to go to the playoffs. And for the girls on the boys' side, we got to figure it out. Uh, boys lost to Graham, seventy-two to thirty-six. Uh, really, really no excuse. You know, we got to figure ourselves out, and find a way to stay in ball games, find a way to get rebounds, play great defense, put points on the board, uh, however that may be. So, uh, really, really, really need it for them to. Play well tonight. You know, I think they're going to be without Marcelo Hooker. Uh, most people probably don't know, but he had a bout. I uh, don't want to go into it any further uh, just for disclosure with family, but uh, uh, he probably won't play tonight. He's a big rebounder for us, uh, but I wish him the best in getting back and, and making sure he's healthy and, and getting through this cold or whatever's going on. But uh, uh, the guess, you know, guys have got to step up. they got to find their way. I mean, we got to find ways to get in the win column. I know that they work really hard uh, and they expect to win, so hopefully tonight will be a rebound for them and they can get in the win come uh, what, in their second district game. Yeah, yeah, big games for both teams. Of course, uh, girls will be wrapping up the first half of the district tonight, so they can even up their record. That would be very helpful going into the second half of district. Sure, and you know, I've said a great opportunity for them to do that. I mean, uh, by looking at what we've seen, you know, we played really well against Mineral Wells and, and shut and he really – you know, stymied them. Uh, so we expect to do the same thing with the girls. Uh, just go out and play. On you know, the boys, you know, I don't know what Steamville has coming back, but last year had three opportunities to win ball games and didn't do it. Uh, really gave those games away. So uh, that's on us. Uh, so hopefully our kids will come out. You know, it's going to be uh, uh, going to be a lot of energy, uh, electricity in the air. It's Steamville, and everyone makes a big deal of it. It's going to be it's a rivalry and. They're coming to town, so it's going to be a knockdown drag on them, sure. So go out and support them and see what we can do to get in the win call. Uh, of course, we mentioned Lions soccer canceled Friday. <laughs> Lady Lions are playing Friday on a little hot streak soccer-wise. Yeah, yep, they're going to play at Taylor on Friday, but they're coming off a consolation victory against uh, uh, who would they play? That was Georgetown Gateway. Gateway, that's right, Gateway. Everyone's asking, where's Gateway? Where's Well, Gateway's a charter school. Uh, but uh, we're trying to figure out where it was. But we didn't know if it was in Waco or in the Austin area. But congratulations. They went 3-1 and one, uh, throughout the tournament. That's phenomenal, beating some really good teams. So uh, Coach Mosqueda Walker has really got them going. Uh, she got to sit with her on Friday when we watched the boys. The boys uh, hosted 
uh, Snyder and weren't victorious. They lost that game one to nothing, but what an awesome game to watch. Had opportunities to score goals that just didn't go in the net, but I uh, got to sit with Coach Walker and just talk to her a little bit, you know, getting Maddie Powell back, not Maddie Powell, uh, uh, Molly Oliver. Um, yeah, Molly Oliver, thanks. <laughs> it was an M. Sorry, you know I'm old. <laughs> Getting Molly Oliver back is going to be big. She's the leading scorer for her. So them, for them to be successful without Molly is a big deal. Uh, that shows unity with the team. But getting Molly back and having an opportunity to put more points on the board is big. So uh, she was excited about that, but really excited about where girls are playing. Yeah, I think soccer, what, the 26th, a week from Friday, they both start district, I believe. Yeah. So right around the corner for them. You know, we got baseball starting up on Friday. Softball's already a weekend. And had, it's typical. If you want to know what the weather's going to be like on a certain date, figure out when baseball and softball start. Because usually when baseball and softball start, it gets nasty, it gets cold, it gets icy, it gets rainy. And that's the welcome to start of baseball and softball. So we're on the right track, but baseball will get going under uh, Blake Sanford's first year, look for some great things. You know, got great leadership, uh, a great senior class, so uh, got great pitching, got a great battery, uh, got some returning players that did really well, so I'm excited to see uh, what kind of product they put out. The girls, you know, rebounded last year. I thought they really had a lot of great enthusiasm under Coach Munguia, uh, and just sort of turned the page, and, and they're having fun and, and were successful, so I look forward to an awesome spring. Yeah, I guess Monday was the second official day of practice, and they posted a photo of the field completely covered in snow. Yeah, so. yeah, snow, snow. So a little delay on that, but they'll get going. Uh, anything uh, else going on, Coach, we need to talk well, about? Well, I got one more young man I'd like to acknowledge, Hayden Prophet. Congratulations to him for uh, making the FCA All-Star team. Uh, that's a big deal for basketball. Uh, as soon as I get those in for the girls, I'll get those on the air as well. But I uh, have a great number of participants in that, which is awesome because they all have to be uh, elected. You can nominate them, you can put them up there, but they got to be elected selected, sorry, selected by a coach to play on those teams. So uh, we had a good showing with the with the boys so far, and I expect a great showing with the girls. Yeah, of course, Hayden always shows up on the defensive end for sure for the Lions, draws a lot of charges. So yes, he does. Congratulations to him. Anything else we need to touch on on your list there? No, uh, we're going to uh, we're going to uh, Lubbock on Friday. Coaches, defensive coaches, we're going to Lubbock. We're speaking at the South Plains Football Clinic. Going to talk a little defensive linebacker play and then break down uh, the rest of them in, in the breakout rooms where we'll break it up, talk about every position and how we do and technique and things like that. So that's always an honor to get to go speak at those football clinics. But it's the first time to go to Lubbock and speak to South Plains Clinic. So we're excited about doing that. Good deal. Well, speaking of football, Dave Campbell's came <laughs> out with their realignment projections uh, last week. I'm sure you've seen them. They've got us with the four teams that are left over. Of course, Love Castacato is going down to Division Two. And while one uh, projection I saw had Stephenville filling that spot, Dave Campbell's has Pecos filling that spot. So what do you think about all that, Coach? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I don't get into it. Uh, there are a lot of people asking me to have calls from coaches and calls from coaches in the district asking where I think we're going to go. I don't have any idea. Uh, I have heard rumor that, you know, I got to speak with Matt Stepp, and he's a pretty knowledgeable guy. Uh, but I've, I've heard rumor that UIL's sort of upset with some schools like Pecos, who's opting up uh, to try to get out of a district to opt up and maybe go to El Paso or somewhere. So thinking that they may move them in our district just to say, hey, if you want to move up, you're going to play somebody. So I'd welcome them if that's the case. Uh, you know, and everyone's like, well, travel, we'll travel. Well, honestly, you go once a year. It's one day a year, so it's not that big a deal. Uh, and I've seen moving Steamville over. I've seen projections of us being in district with Steamville, Springtown, Decatur, uh, us and Alvarado. I've seen uh, where they move those three teams or four teams to Region 2 and, and Fort Worth goes to Region 1. So you never know. It's just it's really just guessing. And the UIL is very tight-lipped about that. They don't let information out. I've been doing it for 30 years, and not one time have I seen that where the UIL had information leaked out. And, you know, on February 1st, we'll go to a couple of sites. I'll probably go back to Georgetown and send Coach Jones and a couple of guys to uh, Birdville, uh, which is in a big room. And what you do, man, it's like the New York Stock Exchange, the best way I can explain it. You sit down at a 9 o'clock on the dot. They're going to have packets. They open, they break the seals on the boxes because everything's sealed. Uh, most everybody's sprinting up there to get a packet. I'm like, I walk up there, I'm old. You know, I'm like, man, it, I, what is 20 seconds going to do? 
you know, you get your packet, you go down and find what district you're in, number one. You already know your classification, try to find your district, and then you immediately go into trying to solidify your schedule. Uh, I've been at those, those um, what do they call those, those realignment days to where it's just frantic and I've lost games and people that said they were going to play me drop me or because of their schedule you had to drop. Uh, our schedule is pretty set on the fact that I don't think it can be affected by uh, what alignment is. The reason I say this, we'll play Wiley week one, which is uh, a 5A Division two school, and this is going to be a shocker to some. Uh, but penciled in Wall uh, simply because we cannot find a week two game. Wall cannot find a week two game. And I spoke to the coach and told him just pencil it in. If I can find a game by September, February 1st or 2nd, I'm going to. If you find one, do so. I won't be upset about that because we're just assuring a 10, a ten game schedule. Uh, when I first got here, we only had nine games. Had to really scramble and find a, a team that was opening up.